Hello, what's up and welcome! Yo, Pedro! Pedro, how's it going, man? Uh, today's part two, making procedurally generated audio. What's up, Salad Dogs? You notice since yesterday, this melody sounds a little better because it's not playing the notes like twice and stuff. Today I'm gonna work on actually creating it in a certain key. So the, the, notes, the notes that are playing will all play in the right key. And that will be procedurally determined by your world seed and all that. Um, so once again, this sounds kind of horrible, right? This is just a stupid like boop, beep, boop, boop, boop. This is not what the music's gonna, the game's gonna sound like, but it's just a proof of concept. I'm working on the, the overall parts of, you know, how do I get it? How do I get a project to work? How do I get it to set the right random notes? How do I do the random notes? Like, what's the best way? So it sounds annoying. Yeah, so um, what I'm working on today is uh, I'm trying out, I have I actually um, sent a message to the guys at FMOD last night on their question and answer site, and they gave me an answer. Basically, yesterday I was having trouble trying to create, uh, I tried to create a multi-sound, right, with all 12 notes in it, and uh, trigger one of them based on a parameter, but you can't do that. So, but there is a way to do it. You can actually create a, an event sound. What's up, Wooks? So yeah, I'm using event sounds here. Basically an event sound is just like an, a nested event. So the way it works in FMOD is like you've got these events. Like for example, uh, playing level one's music might be an event, um, but you can actually nest events. So inside level one, this is the thing right here is the background boo, bass noise. And here's some beep, 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 some beeps and boops, right? Actually, I don't even need these boops or this bop track anymore. All we have is the beep and the bass. Uh, so, um, yeah, all I did was create a nested event for each one of these. So this is note one, this is note two, this is note three, and then we're repeating note one again at the end. Um, and uh, note one is just an a own separate event with all of the notes, and they're triggered based on the random number. So um, it, it will trigger one individual note based on the random rand one parameter. So we got, for example, note A, A sharp, B, C, that's all triggered based on this rand one parameter. A is if it's 0 to 0 0.5, A sharp is 0 0.6 to 1.5, B is 1.6 to 2.5, etc. I had this just straight up right at 1.0, and this one was zero, and this one was two or two or whatever. But that didn't work. Sometimes it didn't trigger them. So you have to kind of set some flexible stuff here. Probably a way the floating points round. Um, so yeah. So today I'm, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna keep on exploring this event sound method. And if this doesn't, there's one other way I can actually achieve procedurally generated audio, and that's to use programmer sounds which immediately was like appealing to me. I'm like, yeah, programmer sound, what's that? Basically a programmer sound is, it's, this, it's kind of the same thing as this right here where you're, you can, you can, but basically what you're doing is you're triggering, you're, you actually load in the sound based on your code. So I could have this note one right here and then it would ask my code like, hey, what, uh, what sound do you want here? And then that would be actually a, probably a, an easier way to do all this, but I'm trying the event driven way first because it's kind of neat to have it all packaged into one master bank. And I think what happens when you do programmer sounds, I haven't tested this yet, is that it will load it all into, it will load the bank, but then you have to actually load the sound effects too. And so anyways, I'm trying out both methods to, methods to see which one is more viable which one's more efficient? Which one's easier, right? Which one's like takes less time? Which one's more rapid? You know, which one takes more work in Ableton? Yeah, just exploring it all. So I figure the more time I spend here exploring how to do procedurally generated audio, the faster it's gonna be once I've got to figure it out how to actually go back through all the tracks in the video game so far and then make them all procedurally generated audio. So. This one day invested into exploring these methods ought to be, you know, pretty fruitful. So <clears throat> I've got this all, so it plays three different notes. There's actually four different um, 
triggers for these nodes, but there's actually only three different nodes based on RAND1, RAND2, and RAND3. So you'll notice when I'm in the first room, or wait, the second room, something like that, it plays the same note twice. Let's do that. Let's go here and I'll show you what I mean. There. So note three is the exactly the same thing as note one. Those last two notes should be different. Nice, right on. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad. Yeah, I hope this is uh, interesting to watch. And I really, what I really, really hope for the most is that this will become surprising. I want to play the game and have it surprise me with a melody, like a brand new melody. Like, whoa, I never thought that it would create that melody. What's up, Alex Pita? I was just talking about you yesterday, man. I was like thanking you for your awesome contributions with the with the translation. How you been, Alex Pita? Salad Dogs, by the way, we were talking about Xcode yesterday and extensions and stuff. And there, check this out. Steve Tramby shared this with me. There's you can actually you can actually disable um Xcode 8's restrictions and get Xcode 8 to load plugins. So here's some, let me post some links in the chat. Creating music based on the movement of hamsters? How awesome is that? Yeah, yeah, totally. Check it out. Here's the link to um yeah, there's totally a way to fix it. You kind of you kind of have to like hack your Xcode and get it to stop checking um, something. But there's a script for it. Here's the script: make Xcode Xcode plugins work. Yeah, that's all thanks to Steve Tranby. Thank you again, Steve Tranby. He's a saint. You're great, Peter. Nice man. All right, okay, so what I'm gonna do, since I, I don't want it to play the same note twice, I want it to create a list of notes that are possible, and that can be based on a key, and then um, choose one of the notes at random. So that's what we're gonna do now. Yeah, Steve Tramby is the man. He's quite, quite knowledgeable and resourceful. So, I wanna get a list of musical keys. I had a freaking cheat list for this, and I lost it somewhere along the way. But let's go, um, let's go with the A major key. Thanks, Peta. Right, tomorrow for me. Yeah, right on. What's up, Ogre Shud? Okay, so well, let me just fill you in on what I'm doing here to anybody that's just started watching. Um, I got procedurally generated notes and stuff. Yes, Pedro, what happened, man? They offered the job and pulled it. Um, it's I got it now, so where it plays, it plays the right, it plays notes based on the random different numbers. And what I'm doing is making it so it chooses notes that are all unique and based on a musical key. You politely decline the one with the game. A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp. Cool. Okay. Oh, it was a PHP. Uh, uh okay. So you like how's it going with the position you got hired at though? A B C sharp D E F sharp G sharp. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a table of um, keys and their relative indexes into those keys. So I can use this random note function to determine. Well, first of all, I'll determine a key that the music should be in, 
and then I'll determine what notes it should choose from randomly. And then this, these last three things where it chooses the random notes, we'll, we'll be picking from that random list. So A would be zero, um, A sharp is one, B would be two, PHP isn't that fun? Uh, D5. E6. F7. F7! Makes you think of the key on the keyboard. F sharp's 8. G is not, wait, did I do this wrong? I must have done this wrong. Which one did I miss? A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp. Oh shit, I'm like, forgot one. We think to implement movement by mouse? No. I know, I really don't want to do that. I don't like mouse games. Do you, do you want like, do you want that? Alex Pita, if you want that, I will, t I will put that into consideration, but is it, is it that you want it or does somebody else want it? What, what are you thinking? Wild chat. What's up, man? Okay. So D sharp is six. E is seven. What's up, Captain Octave? Yes, this is procedural audio production on Twitch. You want that? Oh. Wait, just to attack? Alex Peter, do you want it? Do you want it just for attacking an enemy? Or do you want it for actually clicking to move to that position? Oh, I don't want to do it. It's not very, well, yes, it is relatively very easy. Well, it's not very easy. I've done this before for Hero Bash. Hero Bash had basically mouse-based movement based on your, you know, you have to click on a certain position or whatever. Uh, I'll think about it. All right, so let's get the keys. We got A, B, C, this is key of A. All right, let's go for A sharp. B flat, same thing. B flat major. Uh, yes, yeah, CM, CLRS. Is that control M, control L? Uh, yeah, so um, let me show you what's going on here. I'm going to call you control M. All right. Unless you prefer to be called something else. I'm working on procedurally generated audio. This is, um, I want to basically more specifically, I'm creating procedurally generated melodies. All right. This is a proof of concept. This game is called Songbringer. It's like Zelda one, but it's procedurally generated. Um, so what you're hearing here is some beeps and boops in the background. Uh, this is a proof of concept. It sounds horrible, right? It's, it's, it's an annoying musical track here, but it's just a proof of concept to see if I can actually get my game producing the right random numbers to um, create a pr procedurally generated melody. As you see, as I go into different rooms, the melody changes a little bit. So it's using random numbers that it actually bakes into the world. So this entire world is generated from a six letter world C that you give it and every single room has all these different random numbers baked into all the positions, right? So that when I go into this room, it always generates the exact same room and when I go into this room, it always generates exactly the same room. So I'm using those random numbers to create procedurally generated melodies. So I'm working on right now, making it so that I've got every single musical key in the game and listed as indexes so that I can basically create 
I could choose a key. It might be based on the current dungeon you're in. Like this current dungeon, dungeon one is, and this world seed uses the key of C or whatever. And then it's always going to generate random melodies in the key of C. Maybe they're a little bit different each time, but they're always in the same key. All right, Sao Dongs. Okay, so A is this. Yo, Boogie, you're a saint. Thank you, man. I was going to request that. I was totally going to request that. Uh, it's so awesome. I'm going to type this in right now just so I've, I create some muscle memory for it for myself. Release. It's so great. Okay, key of B flat slash A sharp. B flat C D D sharp F G A. Okay, so here's the key of A sharp, I'm gonna call it, even though musically it's preferred to be called B flat, whatever. It's just a matter of perspective, whichever way you're going in time. And I like to list them like this, so it's kind of more mathematical and programmery. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Bafu, dude, yesterday Bafu was the first person to comment. He like literally was like first, and he went, Wizard Foo won 248 points. Like he gave me free parking like immediately for starting the stream. I'm like, thanks, Bafu. You're awesome. B major. Look, this one has five sharps. Oh, but it doesn't list them. You're a flat scale man yourself, yeah? So, okay, Captain Captain Octave, it, do you have any musical training? Can you explain to me why you would prefer a flat scale, like like a B flat versus an A sharp or whatever? Just, just based on what you would consider it. I've always been curious about that because I don't have any formal musical training. Nice, right on. So tell me, tell me. All right, all right. Keep C. C major. Oh yeah, I forgot about C being the simplest key of all. Okay, all right, flat versus sharp is entirely subjective. Okay, I agree. All right, here, yeah. I'm trained in jazz and it uses a lot of flat scales, so I typically think of harmonies in that way. Okay. So I think of it, okay, I think of it like this, right? Yeah, like Boogie just said, it depends on the direction you're heading in the song, right? So if you're, if you're playing um, something and I don't know, like, yeah, yeah, mathematically programming, yeah. So like, like just like Boogie said, it depends on the direction you're heading when in the song. Like, so if you're playing a a C, for example, and your next note is a well, a B or a C flat or whatever you would consider that. Um, that's when you would call it a C flat. I guess, no, I guess B, let's, let's just call it A sharp versus B flat. Um, if, you're, if you're playing a B and then your next note is a B flat slash A sharp, it's, you would call it a B flat if your, your previous note was B. Yeah, 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 okay, right. So it's really just a matter of perspective. It's like where, what note you played before that kind of, it kind of gives you what you would call it, but yeah, mathematically they're exactly the same. Okay, all right. 
So from your perspective, it's based on the, the, the fact that you play a lot of jazz, and typically they think of it that way. All right, all right. Cool. It's good to finally know that. Do you, uh, do you play a lot of music? You like to jam? <laughs> Ogre shut. How do you type with boxing gloves on? Well, strong bad answers it the best. I'll leave I'll leave it that to strong bad. What's up, Zylaws? Game's coming great, man. Oh, you're focusing on game audio. Nice, man. Do you have um, some examples of your work? Feel free to share them. Oh my god. I forgot the C-sharp major is all sharps. This is a pretty interesting key, is it not? You go from C having all not sharps, not flats, to C-sharp having all sharps. It's pretty crazy. How does that even happen? Oh, B flat or B sharp, C. Oh, wait. Technically, technically, this is a C. Ah, oh, it's so good to get this whole cheat sheet established again. I lost, I have, I made one, I for like lost it. E sharp. Oh, you're right. E as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, right. Okay. God, this is great. I'm glad you're here today, Captain Octave. All right, so D major. Once I get all these in here, I can actually make them just rent, just numbers. A musical instrument item? I, was, I had planned that from the start to have a guitar item. Um, I still could do it. It just depends on the time to make it. But it would be pretty interesting to have a guitar item basically that you would use to open up some doors and blocks in the game. You'd have to play a certain musical sequence. It'd be kind of like a password. It's kind of like the password in Axiom Verge where you would enter a password and certain blocks would open or whatever. It would be kind of like that, except you play guitar and you play the right notes and you can get through something. And then you have to collect the notes too. So you'd have to go through the world and you'd collect the note C and then you'd be able to play C. D sharp gave me, gave me G sharp. Maybe was, this is E flat. Oh, yeah, E flat major. Yeah, a lot like Ocarina. Yeah. It would be pretty interesting, huh? And it'd be kind of fun. It'd be kind of like, um, it reminds me of that, that one scene in Sword and Sorcery where you get to jam with, with Jim Guthrie. It's like one of my favorite parts of that game. Get to jam with Jim Guthrie. Yeah. The teleport. Now that's a different, whole different, another mechanic. And a scary monster cry. Like a. Whoops. A flat is a G sharp. B flat is A sharp. C, D, E flat is D sharp, which is our key signature here, or our root note. All right, cool. Rip it through them. E flat, F major. I really love the key of F. This is a sweet key. What is it, what is it about certain musical keys that you just like, like or don't, whoops. Forgot about E.
Can't forget about any key. A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp. Right, some keys resonate well on certain instruments. Ah, uh, maybe that's it. Uh-huh, guitar players like E and C. I guess that applies to vocal instruments too, right? Somebody's voice probably resonates with a certain key sort of well. It's probably my own voice or whatever. I'm like, ah, oh, I like the key of F. Because I am I consider myself... Well, I mean, I really don't consider myself like a any particular instrument that I would prefer playing, except for I just I really love singing. I would consider myself pretty much primarily a singer, but I guess drums and guitar are right up there too. Love, I especially love drums lately. Drums are my like my oh so fun so satisfying to beat on an instrument just like try and destroy your instrument uh huh yeah yeah uh huh yeah the musical puzzle I guess I I do have to do this now huh I have to finish the I have to do the guitar item okay we got F we need F sharp. Yeah, it would give a lot more variety, huh? Uh, A sharp, B, C sharp. D sharp, F, F sharp, G sharp. It's been a minute. So nice. So nice to get this cheat sheet. Mm hmm. Key of G has only F sharp. It's a nice simple one. Almost as simple as C major. G sharp major is a theoretical key. Do you know what that means, Captain Octave? What the heck is a theoretical key? Or were all these theoretical keys? It has a double sharp too. I didn't even know there was such a thing as a double sharp. Da 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 ba da da ba da 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 All right, we got them all created. So now we can go and create this like a a list. <laughs> Mind Blow double sharp, double flat, triple sharp, triple flat. What? Okay, so we need a structure. I guess we'll just go int. Um, musical keys. So we're gonna have 12 keys. Each key has seven notes. Oh, we probably don't need this, the 12 and the seven there. All right, so the key of A has A, which is zero,
a lot. It would be really nice if these had an equal sign. Oh, thanks for saying that, Xylos. Appreciate that. B sharp C. Oh, thanks. Coming to my rescue once again. Thank you. All right, here comes the mathematical part. Where we turn these all into numbers. B is 2. C sharp is 4. D is 5. E is 7. F sharp is 9. G sharp is 11. All right, there. There's the key of A, mathematically. Mathematical. Mathematical! Adventure time, bring your friends. La, 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 la. All right, so A sharp is A, A sharp, C, D, D sharp, Oh, E sharp next to F. Oh, oh. Thank you. Wait, what did I do wrong there? E sharp. Oh, is a G there? Did I, how did I get that one wrong? Did I, maybe that, that wiki thing is wrong, huh? Oh yeah, it's F double sharp. Which would be a G. This is really weird. This is like the weirdest key of them all. Holy crap. This is definitely mind blown. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's like eight notes though. What did I do wrong here? <laughs> I don't. I don't have any way to express express double sharps. I'm trying to just express it in the simple way. So that's why this is a theoretical key, huh? So it's got A sharp, B sharp, which would be C, C sharp, D sharp, F, G, G sharp. Oh, there's no D sharp. Oh, there is. Where did I get E from? E's not in here. That's the problem. All right, so E, A sharp, C, C sharp, D sharp, F, G, Whoa. And G sharp. Okay. In um I'm just gonna consider that as the key. Even though this is totally probably not technically correct. Is it correct? Maybe it is. Maybe it's mathematically correct, maybe not. But I'm gonna consider that it is for now. Alright, so we got C D uh where were we? F and G. F G. I'm probably gonna have to double check all this. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve.
All right, so the key of B. It's so confusing. <laughs> music is music is a beautiful thing. All right, so we got A sharp one. B is two, C sharp four, D sharp six, E is seven, F sharp is nine, G sharp is eleven. The key of C, oh, such a beautiful, simple thing. But when mathematically, it's not as simple. D is five, E is seven. Oh my god. I just thought of a way that'll make it so it's not, this is not janky at all. <sighs> this is so great. Oh my god. Check this out. It's gonna be so much better this way. I'll make an enum that has each note. Duh. So, K. I want to call this note. I want to call it. I wanted to call it KA, but KA is already a constant. So K note A, K note, you know, A sharp. Dang it, too bad I can't do that. <laughs> That's fine. K note B. K note C, K note D. This way I won't have to double check stuff either. K note E, and it will be self documenting. Yay! Programming! I forgot D sharp and C sharp. You didn't want to back C code? Oh, that would have been a great suggestion. It definitely wouldn't have been back C coding. Oh, it is the same pattern, Captain Octave. You're right. It is. There, uh, well, not necessarily a better way to express it because this is nice to have it all expressed visually. But the way I could do that is to write a function for each key and then I would just use the same pattern and then put it all together. But I kind of like to see this as a struct and just see it visually so that I can reference it in the future. So I guess there would be a simpler way to do it without creating these structs, but better is kind of, in this sense, a subjective. So, all right, F sharp, G, G sharp. Yes, this is gonna be so much better. All right, fuck all this. Okay, so, musical keys. K note A, K note, this is uh, K note B, K note C sharp, K note D, E, F sharp, G sharp. So much better! So much better than the other way, for sure. What do we got here? Five, two, three, four. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, A sharp. Oh, this has A. All right. So this is A sharp. C, D, D sharp, F, G. Creative search and replacing. Oh, thank you. It's hit running already. Yes, thank you, Ogre Shud. Take away my pain, please. Sometimes I don't think of things, so thank you.
B, C, C sharp, I could have just done this a simpler way too, but oh well, didn't take that long. I know it's gonna be it's we're almost there boogie. We're almost there All I gotta do after this is to select the key then select a few notes from the key Oh right, yeah <laughs> You you think of these things? I know you you're so much more better at being lazy than me. Except for key, except for B and E. Sit down, I'm not gonna win. C sharp. C. But C comma. Whoops. A comma becomes K note A. Whoops. Oh, whole word matching? I guess that would make it a tiny bit faster. I guess the commas work fine though. Yeah, it does. You go to this little magnifying glass, so you can edit your fine options. Oops. Keep doing that. Ah, oh, this is so much better. How did K, oh, I forgot D. There's only two G's? Three G's. Oh, there's a G. Oh, duh, because G's at the end. Well, what? This isn't right. Blam! All right, what's wrong with this one? Nothing. Oh. Okay, now G sharp. Okay, probably a good thing to do though would be to go and write a little bit of code to make sure that I did this all right. Like I could just, you know, write some code, do a little pattern or whatever. But I kind of like to prefer it like this. 
Yes, search and replace. That method is so much better. Okay, so now that we've got that in place, this is pretty simple. We're going to select the key. So I'm going to use... Um, I'm going to use the... We're going to get the block for the home position of this Z. So basically, every single dungeon, I want to have the same exact musical key. So we're going to select a key first, and that's going to be based on the current area Z. So we're going to go blocks, um, get, rand. <laughs> we would have been here all day. All day. Get rand one from world, get start pause for this Z. Area pause that Z. And we'll just use uh, X position zero, Y position, whatever. It doesn't really matter. We're just getting rand one. So this is um, auto music key equals that. Mod the number of keys we have. All right, there, we got a key, which is the same for every dungeon. Blam! Now we just need to select a bunch of, we need to fill up a, an array or vector of ints with um, notes. Wait, no, possible notes. Possible notes equals musical keys. Um, music key. There we go. Okay, so now random note. Why did that not work? Oh, because it's enums? Is that why? Oh, you suck. Can it construct that way? Nah. I guess I'll just use a for loop. That's lame. Possible notes to push back. Come on, autocomplete. So slow sometimes. Seriously. <clears throat> Musical keys, music key. I. You're happy with that, right? Yay. And then this is our um, vector in. All right, brother. Vector in notes. So we're going to select a, a note at random and then um, and then remove it from the list. So we've got our random number. This is float F. We want to pass in all our possible notes into each one of these calls. And then So float f, we're going to go, let's take an iterator to the beginning and advance it. That's a good way to do it. Auto it equals notes stop begin. Um, is it called it, is it advance or is it it.advance? I do this in ad foes. where it selects an iterator, it gets an index, and then, yeah, it's called advanced index, okay. All right, Elgershad, see you, man. Nobody click on this guy's link. I'm trying to troll you. What's up with the trolls lately? Like, all of a sudden, there's trolls again? In index equals DRAND F times No no just D no 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 we want just F actually floor F Yeah we want to keep it like this actually That'll give us a strictly 
it, this will take this floating point number between zero and one, give us an accurate range on on which note to select. Even though there's only seven notes, though. Okay, yeah. So let's use seven. If it's greater than or equal to seven, this is going to be f equals six. There's a very slim chance that f will be greater than or equal to seven, but this little bit of code will keep that one edge situation from happening. So index is just L round F, F times notes dot size. Oh, we need const int size equals notes dot size because notes is going to change every time we do this or this thing. What's up, Momir? How you been, man? I haven't seen your name in a minute. All right, so this is going to be need to be based on size. Actually, this should be a const float. And if f is greater than size, f equals size minus one. Yep. Procedure generated melodies. And this is going to be f times size. Okay, then we go advance it by index. And then our then we can get the return value f equals in direction of it. And then we can erase it equals, well, we don't really need to do equals, but doesn't really matter. It equals note dot erase. Kind of just a good practice to assign your iterator after you erase an element. And then return F. That was a lot of work, but let's see if it works. Work, work, work. How many times can you say work in the same sentence? All right, so I'm going to set a breakpoint in here. Just make sure this is working right each time. So we're going to be taking three random notes for each one of these. Every time we go into a different room in this dungeon, we're going to be grabbing three different random notes, but deterministically from the musical key for this dungeon. So at first I want to actually see this dungeon. Set a breakpoint um, here. Make sure that's good. And then set a breakpoint here. What's up, Deus? Hello. You can only compose in Mario Paint Composer. That's cool. All right. So first thing I want to see is the possible notes. I want to make sure this turned out good. We selected musical key number two, which should be the key of A sharp. No, not the key of A sharp. Dang, I need like a little index into this too. Zero, one, two. It's key of B. B, B major, basically. All right, so B major should have key or, or notes. One, yeah, that'd be A sharp. Two would be B. Yeah, 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 yeah. F sharp. Right, okay, good. We selected the key of B. All right, and now here we're grabbing a random note from those notes. So at first, the note size is seven. Um, F is going to be floor F, F times size, right? So that's going to give us most of the ball. It's probably going to be a number between zero and six, but sometimes could give us seven in the very small case that F was exactly 1.0. So anyways, we got F becomes three. Making noise, making noise is one step towards composing, man. You're on the right track. So it is notes dot begin. Index is L round F, F times size. No, that's wrong. We already computed a perfectly fine F. But we just want to make sure and double check this by doing it like this. Clamp by f between 0 and size. 
minus one. Okay, this should be better. First random note, once again, we should have the exact same size, 7, and exact same f, yeah, 3. All right, so it equals no stop begin, advance it by clamp by f between 0 and size minus 1, so 0 and 6. Once again, that should just become out to an iterator to the third, fourth element. And then f equals the indirection of it, so f should become... The fourth note in the key of B. Which should be D sharp. This, which is F equals 6, which is, is that right? Yes! Alright, okay, it appears to be working. Let's make sure it works for the second two notes, though, because it's going to... Erase a note each time. We want to make sure it still works after it erases that note. So we got f equals six. Yes. What's up, Rocket Bunny? How's it going, man? All right. So this time we have a key si or a size of six instead of seven. F equals whatever our random number was times the size, and then same edge case and same advance. Should be fine. Now this is where it gets kind of tricky because we're selecting a node at random out of the keys. But anyways, it should be fine. F is now 9. So is, nine's, is 9 a key? Is 9 in the right key? I should verify that. We got this same key. 9 is node F sharp. Is F sharp in the key of B? Yes, it is. All right, and we'll do it one more time just to check this last note. It should be fine. F this time is 1, which is A sharp, which is the first note in the key. Well, the last note in the key if you're thinking musically. Cool. All right, it's going to work. It's going to work, man. Let's see. All that just so we can hear some different keys some, for some really ugly sounding music. So once again, we have a background bass note sound just going boo, and then we've got the some beeps, boops, and bops. But these should all be in a musical key that's consistent throughout this entire dungeon, and then random based on the current room within the dungeon. Dum, dum. problem with this room that third and fourth note wait no 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 no. this might not be a problem i might just be thinking of it here let's make that clear nice man you like it valtry you're like pump up the tempo it's not it's not fast enough sure let's do that This will sound kind of ugly at first, but let's just, I'll just repeat the third note so we can tell when the third note's happening and it'll sound a little bit faster.
Hold on a second. If this is no what? No what? I need to make sure of these. Okay, note. Th yeah, that's kind of weird because we got note three. It should be exactly the same note each time. But it's not quite. It's not playing note three, is it? No one, no two, no three, no three, no one. The the low sounds hurting your ears? Really? Yeah, yeah, exactly, Bookie. So it's always gonna be the same rhythm. So I'm imagining it kind of like this. Let me show you what uh, this will eventually be like. Let's go to music for like level six. This is kind of a pretty good example of where to start. Here is level six is music. This is um the ice dungeon. All right. Sand chords. So, okay, so imagine that if it if it were procedurally choosing these notes. So, um, the way I designed or wrote this is that you know, yeah. So yeah, in, your, in answer to your question, it's gonna be the exact same rhythm each time. Is just change the melody. So the melody here is it starts. It only has three different notes that it's actually selecting from. All, these are kind of hard to see because they're all pink. Let me make, make them all red and you can be, you can see it clear. There, so there's all these notes, right? You got G sharp, you got a C sharp, and I think there's like a, a G or something in here too. But it's really, it's only using three different notes the entire time. Um, so my thought is, all right, let's select those notes at random. Well, music, musically from the same key, but select them randomly in the game based on the current dungeon. And then yeah, it can just create it can procedurally play this with a different melody for each time you for each world seed. Whoops. So I I, I hope everybody's kind of following what, what's going on here. Um if you're not, you you'll kind of get the feeling of it, I'm sure. So this is kind of an example of what it'll eventually be like. It'll it'll just change this melody. But it will keep the exact same rhythm pattern or the timing of the notes basically. So when will you begin working on another project? Uh, psh, I don't know. It depends on when Songbringer's finished. Yeah, Boogie, exactly. Exactly. So like all these all these Cs might become F sharps and all the all the G sharps might become a, a F. But always the G sharps will be something in particular and always the C sharps will be something in particular. So it'll still have the feeling sort of of the the song i wrote but it will always be a different melody but the melody will always work because it's all it will always be in the same key so that's why we just did all that math there with these keys and stuff all right so it is working but i'm cu i'm just kind of curious as to why it sounds like it's repeating note 3 but it changes each time Why does this have, oh, that's good. Yeah, all right, I double click into this into this one and it's definitely ran three. This one's also ran three. Very curious. Hmm. Okay, what if I delete this last note one from playing? Maybe it's just to kind of uh, 
Maybe I'm just, it's like a human error and I'm not quite not feeling it. Or maybe I didn't build it. Yeah, right. It's not a procedurally generated rhythm. It's just a procedurally generated melody. Yeah. So it's not entirely procedurally generated audio, but it's a step. It's a step towards that. Eventually I could create procedurally generated rhythms too, but that's going to be a kind of a whole nother level. Yeah, I'll have to basically, I'll have to go and re, I'll have to write the songs once in, a, in Ableton, right? To get all the notes and get everything feeling right and get all the different sounds. And then, yeah, I kind of have to reconstruct it all in F mod and re-export a whole bunch of freaking notes. Like I might have to export 36 different notes just for this song, I don't know, 24 notes. And I'm not sure how I'll do different links of notes. Like this, these are all different links, right? So I might have to do a whole set of, no a whole 24 different notes just for that one thing right there. I don't know, hopefully I can figure out a simpler way to do that. But I think it'll pay off, it'll be really cool. Can you change the instrument procedure? Sure, that's possible too. Why is Valtry better than just reading a JSON file? Because it's simpler and easier to read and it's way faster. And I don't have to import any stupid JSON libraries or something. But especially I don't have to encode, I don't have to put anything in quotes and all the stupid things you have to do with JSON. Okay, let's see if it sounds, I'm trying to see if this is right. Yeah, I could definitely change the instruments procedurally, but that would be a lot more work for the, um, for exporting everything. But yeah, it's a possibility. Stupid Jason. <laughs> definitely playing a different note. That duh, duh. Bass too loud? Sorry, guys. Let me turn it down. I'll make it half as loud. How about that? Sorry, I'm listening on headphones, so I can't really tell. It's not very nice. Yeah, it, it's a step higher? You mean an octave? Um, right, right, logging what note it is, yeah, but like, the trick is, it's, it's, I'm sending exactly the same rand1, rand2, and rand3 into the song, it's like somehow in F mod, it's gone and then played a different note 3, and there is something here in F mod where you can actually change the pitch, So I'm wondering if it actually is like pitching up there at the end. Let's do a little test for that. How would I do that? Yeah, the second, third note, right. Oh, is the bass really that much of a problem? Is it, here, let me turn it down even more. I think maybe this is a, this might be left over from when I did this before I had a pitch. 
parameter somewhere. So what if we just started looping from the beginning? And I'm going to take note one, note two, note three. I don't know, this should be fine. Okay, yeah, if I'm going to take the exact same notes without changing anything about them, and then if it was some sort of pitch automation, then we should, those last two notes right there should be exactly the same. <laughs> it is only a step. Oh man, this is kind of pissing me off. Like what, why is it changing it? No, see that time it was a totally different note. if you go to some other rooms. <laughs> so, dude, what's going on? Here, okay, I will do at least a log of each note. Now, see, they're not all random. They're not all random from um, FMOD's perspective because it's playing the same pattern, right? It's we're getting the same pattern, so we know. I know that it's actually using these three parameters. Okay, I'm just gonna log this out on the console so we can see. Yeah, exactly. Captain Oct Octave saying it, they're saying it a different way. It's always wrong the same way. It's always playing the exact same pattern. So that's yeah, that is that is kind of good. So this will just visually show the three notes it's chosen for each area. Yeah, Marcus, that's a really good suggestion, right? Is it is it rolling RAND3 twice? But it shouldn't be, right? It's only calling this function once in my code, I think. That's why I'm going to do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to print this out to the screen so we can just verify, yes, it is only, it is only doing this once, you know? In fact, I need to turn off ambience verbosity to make sure we can show these three notes. I'm using a, a NIMS debug alert. What's supposed to be happening? What's supposed to be happening is it, sh it should play note one, exactly note one, exactly note two, exactly note three, and then repeat note three again. All right, so there, we've got a debug alert. So each time I go into a different room, it should choose three different notes, and it should always play those notes. Always in the same pattern. This might be an, like some kind of FMOD error, or it might be just a way I set up my FMOD project kind of wrong. Whoa. Those were way too, that was wrong. Oh, these are floating point.
It's almost like it played no two again. Whoa, now that's totally wrong. This one's wrong because it should have gone, it said one, six, nine. And that third note is definitely not a nine. Oh man, this is so curious. It's not? Oh, okay. I'm glad you noticed. Huh. Oh, this is a totally different song here. See that? That's so crazy. Whoa. Okay, this is so crazy. I gotta like, I gotta try something. I'm gonna try recreating this whole track. Or re recreating this different, a different level noise. It's almost like there's a, there's a, it's almost like there's a note underneath this or something that's invisible. Uh, no, Marcus. Yeah, I can't do that. Once I, I basically all I can do from the code is um, tell FMOD to start playing this song. Oh, I think FMOD has some kind of console or something like that, like I could actually profile it. But I have no idea how to do that just yet. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to check in this project so far. So I've got a, like, I've got a good git commit of this, so I've, I can go back to this if, if necessary. And then I'm going to try and create another level and start from... Hey, that's a good suggestion, actually. Yeah, both you guys, great suggestion. I'm going to try that first. First, I'm going to check this in, though. Yeah, yeah. Great suggestion. Right? I'll set them all to one. Or one, two, three. All right, so let's do that. Note one is one, note two is two, note three is three. Actually, it'd probably be better to first try note all of them one, right? So we can see if, if FMOD is kind of messing this up somehow. Jazz is always right. That's right. Uh, thank you, chat. Seriously. How many things would I've messed up on had I not been doing a live stream? I this Valtry was a total suggestion from the live stream. Like somebody's like, "Hey, you should write your own data format." I'm like, "That's a good idea." Oh my god. So you you have the proof right there. I sent it exactly the same notes. All of them are one. Oh, wait. Here, hold on. Whoops. This should be percent D. 
All of them are node zero, which is A. And it was definitely playing not A. Wait, I guess he should be floats. Yeah, these should be floats. Because they're sent to fmod as floating point values. Okay. <laughs> Dude, I'd probably be done with the project for six months. <laughs> uh, so it's either fmod or it's something I did wrong in my project for fmod. Which means I might have to go to the, the other solution of using programmer sounds instead of event sounds. Okay, three of those notes are correct. It's only that middle note, they're the third note. The third note's wrong. Let's see what about this room. Same exact thing. The third note's wrong. Hold on, hold on. Let's see if I did mess up the FMOD project. If note three is wrong, let's see if I mess it up here in note three's uh, ranges. <laughs> three's not a magic number, it's, we don't like it. Get rid of note three. Okay, range 0 to 0 0.5, 0 0.6 to 1.5, 1.6 to 2.5. Did I skip one there? No, that's right. 2.6 to 3.5, test note C. C sharp is 3.6 to 4.5, D is 4.6 to 5.5, D sharp. 5.6 to 6.5, 6.6 to 7.5, 7.6 to 8.5, delete it, start over, 8.6 or 9.5, 9 9.6 to 10.5, 10.6 to 11, it looks totally right. Is there any kind of automation going on? Some other weirdness, maybe? This is the right name. It's RAND3. It has an initial, does it have an initial value? It should, shouldn't have an initial value. So you check it, let's prove this. Let's prove this is if it's note three is the problem. We'll go back to level one event. And this third note we're having is super issues with. Let's just delete it. And then duplicate note. What is this? Note. Wait. Hold on. Oh no. Yeah, these are exact. Note one, note two, note three, note three. That's freaking weird. Use only one note in the code and fmod. <laughs> or no audio at all. <laughs> That's a good idea. It's a great idea. Let's use only one note. Right? This is a great way to just determine if it's fmod doing something weird. Alright, I just copy and pasted note one four times. This is as simple as we can get. Silent game. Just yeah, make your own sounds at home. Pretend like it's doing a procedural melody. All right. Yes, I'm loving it. It's so perfect. It's like wearing all monochrome. Dude, 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 dude. Oh, it was perfect. I couldn't have written a better song. <laughs> okay, there. We proved that note one is fine.
Node one, A O the Doki. What if we took note two now and threw it in here four times? Keep that as the music before you break it. <laughs> yeah, nice salad dogs. Yes, that, that's, that explains it. You have to go through the procedure of making it yourself. That's, Zach, that's kind of cool. Okay. Let's start, and let's start doing something even different now where note two is actually a different note. Whoa. This could be a game or some kind of game idea. Somebody out there should do that. It's just, it's just an amplifier. That's all it is. It's like a, it's like a megaphone. All right, that's great. Same pattern, go into this room. Everything is all good. Beautiful, I'm loving that. Okay, so if now let's do the next step. This is where it gets hairy. We're gonna put in note three now. Oh my God, what's gonna happen? All right, here's note three. I'm gonna put this back here, copy it, paste, wait. I'm gonna put note three four times. Let's see what happens. Experiment number four. Beatbox Troll Patrol. Yes, oh, I forgot about Troll Patrol. What, it works now? You shitting me. What? Why? Oh, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't see why. Was it just this one note that was all borked? Let's try and do a different pattern now. We'll go, let's change the colors. These should be a different color so we know that they're note three. And these should be note two so they're like a different color too. All right, now let's do some kind of pattern. Yep, that's what we're doing. Delete it. Delete it. That definitely, I'm deleting that Bork note, man. I think it was that one note. I don't know, was it? Was it not? Let's go one, two, three. And then back to one. It's the exact same pattern I had to start with. Why didn't I put that on the master? What is wrong with this thing? There we go. Okay. It should go da 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 da. <laughs> it does. It makes sense. That was. I must have been one Bork note. It works. It works now, dude. I don't know what happened to that one note. All right, let's put back in the freaking game's random numbers. Let's check that. Let's just make sure. Where can I buy this soundtrack? <laughs> uh. 
Uh, yes, delete for the win. Delete works. Delete did it. Delete is my answer. Deleted. I do type with boxing gloves on. Deleted. Yay! All right, Captain Octave, thanks for your help today, man. I appreciate it. See ya. Thanks for joining. You're recording a bootleg. <laughs> What's up, Boys and Crop? <laughs> it's on Bandcamp. Do-do-do. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go into some other rooms and see if we, we got a... It's still working. Yes, it's still working. Oh, it works now. I didn't notice this pattern here for this one. All right, there you have it. <laughs> Chops and charts worldwide. Yeah, Joe Patron, this is a procedurally generated game, right? So let me show you. Um, this is a procedure generated game. You enter six letters when you create the world. Sorry, it's playing this the music throughout the the, the menu, but it's not supposed to. But I'll show you what it, what it is, right? <clears throat> so, yeah, right. You've got th these six letters generate your entire world, Tyrio, Ploy, or whatever. And then, so the goal is to take a song kind of like this. This is like the dungeon, this is the music for dungeon, the ice dungeon, dungeon four or whatever. So my goal is to create procedurally generated melodies where if you look at this melody that's playing right now, there's only three different notes. So I want to select those three random notes um, based on the dungeon you're in. So the dungeon will select a key, a musical key, and we, that's what all this math is about creating musical keys, you select a musical key based on your dungeon Z le number. So every dungeon will have the exact same musical key and then it will randomize these notes based on that key. So basically it will create a procedurally generated melody that works because it's the same key. But each room could possibly have different melodies. Um, you could change instruments. There's a lot of different possibilities for how to make this all more procedural. So the, basically the point the point is to create music that surprises you. Every time you play it, it could be different music. But what's cool is it could be based on the world seed. So when you enter your world seed at the beginning of the game, like you enter the world seed Zelda or whatever, Zelda will give you the same music every time. But it's still procedural. So next time you play the game and you want to play a different world seed like Wizard or whatever, that'll have some different music as well. It won't be entirely different. It'll have the same rhythm and have the same background noises and stuff like that but at least it will be a procedurally generated melody. There's 308 million combinations. Yeah. <laughs> It'll play Never Gonna Give Up. Yes, we're finally bringing random songs to Songbringer. Yeah, does the speed of the music change as well? Yes, the tempo can change too. And that'll be more of like something that happens when there's more enemies or whatever, right? So if there's a lot more enemies on the screen, the tempo could increase. Um, I can apply different effects, you know? Like this, this screen here with all these enemies on it could... Um, yeah, like you can lower the volume of the beeps and boops or whatever that are going on here. There's so many possibilities. Nice. What's this game about? It's like Zelda 1. 
It's like Zelda 1, but procedurally generated. So for anybody that's just joining the stream or whatever, you're hearing kind of uh, some ugly sounding music, but this is just a proof of concept. I can't even turn it down because it's not hooked up yet. But anyways, this is a proof of concept just to, to make procedurally generated music. Can you play? Yes, you can. You're like, ugly? What? <laughs> uh, uh, so anyways, yeah, if you guys, um, if you guys are interested, yeah, this is not exactly for day 468, it's more like day 600 or whatever, but it's the 468th video. So yeah, if you guys are interested in this game, you can check it all out, it's at songbringer.com, and you can actually pre-order the game and play it right now if you want to play the beta. Um, or you can just wait for it to come out on Steam. It'll be a, it'll be a while though before it's actually totally finished. Um, but yeah, that's it for today's stream. I'm all done. Uh, so what I covered today was, um, or what we just did on live on this stream was to create, um, mathematically we've got, you know, 12 different musical keys. And then in the dungeon, each different dungeon selects a key. So it select, always uses the exact same musical key for each dungeon, and then it chooses some random notes, and then plays them. I'm using Fmod to do all this, and that's about it for today's stream. So yeah, um, if you're if you're sad that I'm stopping the stream now, don't worry. I'm I stream just about every single day. So if you want to follow on Twitch, you'll you could you'll catch me. Otherwise, also there's the YouTube videos. So if you go to uh, YouTube dot com slash c slash nat weiss you got all my youtube videos every single day of this game's development is here on youtube it covers pixel art it covers programming and it covers music so there you go everybody have a good one